Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Regaming to the Com video, we're going to be asking and answering, hopefully anyway, a simple set of questions. Should you buy either Vega 64, 56, or would it be better to spend your cash on NVIDIA's GeForce series? Well, after months of anticipation, months of waiting, months of rumours, and possibly even frustration on many people's parts, we finally have AMD's answer to Pascal's high-end cards. The Vega 64, of course, answering to the GTX 1080 with the 56 facing off against the uh, GTX 1070. Since I've had so many messages asking my opinions on whether people should plonk their cash down, I figured I'd be doing this type of video. I will be getting a Vega sample, however, I've spoken to a couple of AIB partners. I'm working on a third right now, and they've basically told me that currently they are most focused on getting reviewers... Uh, anyway, uh, us, the customized versions of the card. So in other words, ones with custom coolers, custom power phases, and whatever else. And basically, they're heavily tweaked and modified versions. I guess they feel that AMD have already seeded the reviewers with cards, and they might also be waiting to see how drivers shape up over the next month, which we'll get into in just a second, because we're going to talk about drivers. So, first of all, some reviewers just have not even done overclocking tests on Vega. Now, from what I'm hearing, there's a reason behind that. Quite simply, it's because, well, AMD shipped working overclocking drivers late. So what happened is that reviewers were already stressed because of the uh, focus on the Vega 56 thing, which we've discussed umpteen amounts of times now. And then basically... Um, they had drivers which didn't really work correctly with overclocking, then AMD sent them some different drivers, and obviously they, some reviewers just didn't get around to it. Secondly, another website by the name of ComputerBase.de has also pointed out that some functionality in drivers is still inactive, and this is not just them, a couple of other websites have pointed this out as well. Um, for example, High Bandwidth Cache Controller is still inactive. I'm using Google Translate here. But um, essentially, normally the memory management of card is determined by the game. If HBCC is active, on the other hand, it does the work to a larger extent. To a larger extent, and this can be an advantage because HBC uses a so-called flexibly large page-based memory system, and this basically splits memory independently into pages optimized by the GPU. However, apparently, it's switched off by default in the drivers. Um, because it's not working consistently. You can enable this, apparently, uh, forcibly in the Radeon setting menu, but at occasion it doesn't seem to cause um, consistent performance. So that's definitely something to be aware of. The next is primitive shaders, which obviously takes advantage of the new geometry engine. Accordingly, uh, I'll read the problem, this functionality is currently disabled in the driver, Vega only is using the traditional pipeline. When does this change? AMD has not said. So obviously they're being somewhat cagey on that, which possibly is a good thing. It possibly means that we could see improvements in performance in the future, although I am curious to know why they've not enabled these features yet. There is a lot more to discuss, quite honestly, on the Vega architecture, so I might do a Vega architecture deep dive over the next, next couple of days or whatever. However, um, the primary focus of this video isn't really to go into that. It's mostly the performance side of things, which I'm sure most of you really care about more anyway. So I'm going to give you the too long didn't read before we jump into the whole video. The brief synopsis is that the card performs almost identical to the GTX 1080 if you look at a wide swathe of games. Uh, some games it loses quite heavily, other games it has some advantage, other games it's essentially identical, but power consumption is much heavier. The Vega 56 is, I wouldn't say always beating the 1070, but it comes out more often than what the 64 does over the uh, 1080, if that makes any sense. But you'll get what I'm coming from as we're going through some benchmarks. So, the last thing I would heavily suggest if you are interested in buying these cards is that you look at multiple different review websites. There's a reason behind this. I'm seriously stressing this. Like, seriously, check out multiple different review websites. Don't just look at one. The reason I'm stressing this is because certain websites, I'm not going to name names, but certain websites are using benchmarks which 
to be honest, do much better on Vega or much better on Nvidia and others are being more kind of unilateral and it's essentially pretty much between the two. So I'd definitely recommend you check out multiple different benchmarks across multiple different websites and kind of get an idea where you're coming from. We'll start out with a couple of um, slides from Hardware Canucks. I'm going to start with Far Cry Primal 1440p because honestly no one's going to play at 4K with just a single card. Even a 1080 tie probably would struggle really if you want you know 60 FPS, which most people probably do. So 1440p Far Cry Primal, which of course is DirectX 11. I'm going to discuss average frame rates only. But um, 62 frames second for the GTX 1080, which is the reference 56 for Vega 64. The GTX 1070 is getting 53 frames a second, whereas Vega 56 is getting 48. So once again, you can see that 64, 56 frames a second, which isn't much faster, to be honest, than the GTX 1070, whereas the Vega 56 is, once again, 48 frames a second. So that's quite an owl. Uh, Vega definitely loses quite substantially here. Once again, sticking to 1440p, we'll go to Gears of War 4, which is another title that really seems to benefit uh, NVIDIA hardware, but still. So GTX 1080 is basically 92 frames a second, Vega 64 is 83, 1070 is 77, and Vega 56 is 74 frames a second. I'm going to round them up or down here. Grand Theft Auto, 66 frames a second for the 1080. The 1070 is basically 56 frames a second and then vega 64 you have 48 let's call it 49 frames a second and then 44 for vega 56 so obviously in those games you have a definite advantage for nvidia is it just them with the tests well no because if you go to for example uh, kicked guru and let's say look at grand theft auto 4k so you have the 1080 g1 gaming edition which we'll look at average frame rates here, uh, 58 frames a second versus 49.5 frames a second. So essentially you're still getting quite the gulf between the two different sets of cards. Okay, so what about a different game? Well, we'll stick to Kit Guru for just a second. Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, 1080, GTX 1080, 41 frames a second versus 35.7. Um, and this type of performance by the way is mirrored across other websites for example going back to once again computerbase.de you'll notice that we have the a gtx 1080 um 33 frames a second for i'm sorry basically the uh, the rx vega 64 hits 33 frames a second whereas on the other hand a 1080 is hitting around the same unless you have overclocking and that is at 4k however at slightly lower, um, at slightly lower uh, resolutions, you have the 1080 uh, custom variant, uh, sorry, standard variant, 62 frames a second, 61 frames a second for the Vega, and then Vega 56 once again has a slight advantage over the 1070, so not too much of a big deal really. One game, however, that AMD seemed to do pretty well in, not too surprisingly, since they used it a lot in their various demos, is Battlefield 1. Uh, both 1440p and 2160, and it was 4K, run better on AMD's cards. For example, you've got the Vega 64 hitting uh, 58 frames a second versus 53.5. The 56 is essentially identical to the 1080 here. And it does stomp the 1070. And this is echoed as well at 1440p. With the 56 having 92 frames a second versus the 1070's 80 frames a second. So there's quite a nice gap there. What about Witcher 3? On this one I'm going to choose 1440p. Because otherwise the 56 starts to fall quite far behind. As does the 1070 from the 60 frames per second mark. So the 1080 hits around 70 frames a second. That's pretty much accurate. Uh, Vega 64, 50, sorry, 62 frames a second, which is almost identical to the Vega 56. I don't know what's going on there. It's just a couple of frames a second difference. And it does almost um, come level with the 1070, but it does beat it by a couple of frames a second. So once again, the 56 is slightly outpacing the 1070. And these results are also echoed on Tech Power. For example, we've got the um, 1070 being almost neck and neck with the 
Vega 56, but the Vega 56 does slightly win out at 4K. It's getting 37.5 versus 36.5. Four, so it's almost within the margin of error. And then you've got various BIOSes, um, which basically you've got different BIOS modes in the card. You can have different power states, if you will. And in this case, even in the highest performance level, 43 versus uh, the 1080 is 44. So once again, AMD do slightly lose out here. Finally, we'll go to a couple of benchmarks on PC Gamer. So Dishonored 2, well, yeah, it's pretty much a wash here. You can see that... Well, you can pretty much see it yourself. Um, the 1070 stomps pretty much any of the Vega cards, with the 56 doing okay uh, comparatively, given the price, but not that great. I mean, honestly, the difference between the Vega 56 and the 64 here is, is pretty much negligible. We're talking about a couple of frames a second, which you wouldn't really expect. Finally, another favourite of many, Fallout 4. I've got to say, AMD do an okay job but not brilliant. So, for example, at uh, 4K, you've got 49 frames a second versus uh, 45 of the Vega 64. 1070, 40 frames a second, which is almost identical to the Vega 56's credit. Honestly, we could keep going for quite some time here, and I would highly, as I said, if you are considering these cards, I would highly suggest you do some research. The biggest problem with these GPUs, well, there's a couple of issues. One, Pricing is already more expensive in some instances than the equivalent NVIDIA card. Two, um, power. I won't go through all of the power consumption numbers because obviously different people with different settings and different, you know, different um, testing methodologies are getting different power consumption. But the GPU is typically at least 100 watts more power hungry than the equivalent in video card. In fact, in some instances, it's considerably more. Uh, one of the best examples is Fermark, with the system hitting about 360 watts of power consumption uh, for the 64, whereas on the other hand, the 1080 is just 186 watts. So that's pretty much double the power consumption, which is just bonkers. However, one good thing is mining so far has not drastically improved in performance. So it looks like, once again, according to Tech Power Up, the hash rate is not the 70, but it's possible this might improve if mining clients somehow take advantage of the various Vega architecture improvements. So it is faster than the 1070, which gets around 27 MHS, but it's not, you know, so fast that it's going to cripple. For example, the 1070 is getting around 27, the Vega 56 is around 31. So it's not oh my goodness level. And that really is what it comes down to to me. Basically, what's your financial situation? What ecosystem have you already invested in? For example, let's say that you do, you do excuse me, already have a FreeSync monitor. There's just absolutely no point in getting rid of that monitor if it's a nice one and then going with NVIDIA. It's just pointless. On the other hand, if you're kind of neutral between the two companies, you're probably better to just go with the cheapest option. Honestly, if I didn't have loads of cash and I was going with like, you know, the 300 ish dollar price point, whatever, I'd be more tempted to kind of plonk down the cash for the 56 over the 1070, I think. My personal advice to you, if you're still really unsure looking at these numbers, and honestly, I, I wouldn't blame you, I would probably suggest the following. Do a bit more research, wait for the dust to settle, wait for NVIDIA and AMD to basically counterbalance one another. I wouldn't be surprised if these cards sell well if NVIDIA say, hey, we're going to reduce the price of our cards. The other option is that AMD may release drivers which improve performance. It looks to me like there's still room in their Vega tank for performance updates. And I do get the feeling that they release these cards without the, without the drivers being fully mature. Obviously, I, I don't know that because I don't work at their headquarters, but I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. And, uh, you know, some people might say it's unprofessional of me to say this, but I don't know because we don't know what the future holds. Like, if we looked at, like, the, the Polaris series, it definitely did improve quite considerably with driver updates. The issue is, for many... Is that going to be too late? Like two, three, four months down the line? Are people really going to want to, you know, hold out to then? Maybe? It depends on you. 
The other problem um, is that it's going to take about a month for custom variants of the cards. It's all very well to compare it to the Founders Edition 1080, and that's cool for review purposes, and I, I respect that. That's what you've got to do. After all, if you go with like comparing it to the high-end like MSI or Gigabyte or whatever cards that are obviously customized up the wazoo and they've got 25 fans connected to them and you know they've also got you know parts created by I don't know Odin, then obviously those cards are going to do better than like a standard reference design. That's like derp. But that also kind of makes it a bit tricky because if you're in the buyer's windows now and you've got X amount of cash, you know, like, I just need a card, dude. Well, you're going to probably not spend that much more. In many cases, they're around the same to get a custom variant of like a 1070 or a 1080. Honestly, though, I would probably say the 1070 is not dead on, in the water now, but there's a couple of issues that's hitting it. One, Vega 56 is more powerful. It's just faster. And two, it's kind of getting hit with the mining craze. So, assuming Vega 56 doesn't, which, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't, um, I would probably say 56 over 1070, and if you need a faster card, then really the 1080. To me, right now, it's kind of a crap time to buy, and I know that's going to frustrate many of you for me to say that. I, I feel it's just a crap time, because, honestly, these reviews don't really help for many. I have a feeling, and I've been reading some comments because I've been working with clients uh, for most of today, so I haven't really been able to do much work. Um, but I've kind of reading comments on phones and looking at some forums and whatever else and having a few discussions with people actually on Facebook. And people are just confused. They don't know what to do now. And I don't mean this in like, you know, a grandiose kind of, oh my goodness, the sky's falling way, but they're not really sure what to do now because. It's still not that clear because Vega's winning in some benchmarks, losing in other benchmarks, which is fine, but the price performance is a bit tricky because obviously there's price gouging, not in all retailers, but obviously that does depend on your region. The power consumption is a pretty big deal, which may be of concern to you depending on your setup. For example, if you're not paying your, you know, electricity bill, maybe, for example, you know, it's included in your rent or whatever then that's great for you on the other hand if you're in kind of a warm building maybe you don't want the extra heat being thrown into your case that might be a concern who knows the other concern that you may have is that well we don't know how drivers are going to mature some people are calling vega a failure i don't know if it's a failure amd have got a card now which is on paper really good and honestly i think the 56 is going to be the card to get I do wonder, though, looking at the the difference between the 56 and the 64, on paper there should be a bigger gap between the 64 and the 56. So I do wonder if drivers are causing the problems. I'm not telling you not to buy Vega, and I'm not telling you to buy Vega. My personal opinion, though, is if it were me and I didn't need a car this minute, I would probably just wait a couple of weeks. Considering that custom variants of the cards are also going to probably answer some questions, plus the other benefit, of course, is you're going to have more uh, mature drivers by that point, in theory. Sorry if this is not like a clear-cut, you know, buy the card or don't, but honestly, this is one of those things where it's really going to come down to you as an individual. Um, I've linked all of the benchmarks um, that I've used in the video description, so you can go ahead and check those out if you so desire. But honestly, if you are going to buy the card, final thing, look at a whole bunch of different reviews, see how expensive they are, see if you can get a good deal, and I'm curious to see if NVIDIA are going to cut prices. Honestly, I feel that 1070 right now is just too expensive, that's not really NVIDIA's fault, it's kind of the mining craze, so I don't know even if they did cut the price on the 1070, if that's going to make that much difference, but hopefully they do, and hopefully they cut the price of the 1080, the problem is for AMD, obviously if they do, that's going to be very uncomfortable for AMD. If it if they cut the price of the 1080 by like $50 and the 1070 by $50, I'm curious to see how AMD would need to respond in that instance. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Sorry I can't give you a definitive answer, but unfortunately that's sometimes just how these things go. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.